again this morning with the service on page 167. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the responsive reading of the introit as it's printed in the bulletin. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. I will give thanks to you, O oh Lord, among the peoples. For your steadfast love is great above the heavens. Be exalted, O oh God, above the heavens. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Amen. Make known to Jesus among the peoples. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Almighty God, in your kindness, you cause the light of the gospel to shine among us. 
by the working of your Holy Spirit, help us to share the good news of your salvation, that all who hear it may rejoice in the gift of your unending love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Isaiah in the 62nd chapter. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. Until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a lamp that burns. The Gentiles shall see your righteousness and all kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will name. You shall also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no longer be termed forsaken, nor shall your land any more be termed desolate. But you shall be called Hephzibah, and your land Beula, for the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a virgin, so shall your sons marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. I have set a watchman on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace, day or night. You who make mention of the Lord do not keep silent, and give him no rest till he establishes, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading is from Romans in the 10th chapter. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fifth chapter. Now, when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed, and she will live. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for twelve years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitudes thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only believe. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult, and those who had wept, who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, Why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kumi, which is translated, Little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was twelve years of age. And they were overcome with great amazement. But he commanded them strictly that no one should know it and said that something should be given her to eat. This is the gospel of our Lord.
God's grace, mercy, and peace be to you from the Father and from the Son and from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yasu Yafu Ha, Shishi Zaza Da. Greetings to you. From those in Zhengmen City in Guangdong Province in Southeast China, Lydia, the administrator of the English Center, and her husband Caleb, and Michelle and Joey and Hilda and Lily, and Salome, yes, you may be seated. And from the Americans, Michael and John and Eric and Alyssa and Serena and Matt and others that work in Macau or in Jungman, English centers that belong to you because they are facilities of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. Our message for this day does come from the gospel reading, which we heard a few moments ago. I remember once a few years ago, I was serving St. Peter Lutheran Church in Riceville, and it was a Wednesday afternoon, and we would have the after-school kids come from the school for confirmation, and usually we would begin by having an opening with a catechism devotion, some music, prayer. And then when that was concluded, before the children would go to their classrooms, we would have a snack. So they would all go over and line up by the, by the kitchen counter. We would give thanks. Usually each month or each week, one of the parents would be assigned to bring the snack that time. And generally speaking, they had a tendency to bring things like cookies and chips and Doritos and Ho-Ho's and Ding Dongs, you know, those kind of things. But this one Wednesday, as they were lined up, getting ready to pick up their snack, I noticed that there was a little bit of grumbling going on. Almost to the point of, well, not real loud, with very low voices, like they were complaining and grumbling at the parent that had brought the snacks. Because you see, they weren't the ho-hos and the ding-dongs. Instead, it was grapes and apple slices and banana pieces and a little bit of cheese and crackers. How should we think about that? I mean, after all, we all probably do some degree of grumbling and complaining. You know, when someone doesn't reach up to the expectations that we have, we might very well grumble and admonish that person. You know, this week we celebrate Thanksgiving. And under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul in the book of Philippians reminds us that whether he had plenty or whether he did not have very much at all, he knew how to be content. You know, on that Wednesday afternoon, we could almost say whether Paul had some ding-dongs or ho-hos or he had some apple slices and grapes, he knew how to be content with that and to thank God for what had been given to him. But that wasn't all. Later that evening, the phone rang, and it was the mom who had brought the cheese and crackers and the grapes and the apples and the bananas. And then I got to listen to her complain. You know, Pastor, I get tired of this. We bring stuff like that for the children, and they do nothing but grumble and complain, and those children are always complaining about my children. Well, how should we think about that one? You know, we read in the book of First, we read in Genesis chapter 1, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And we know that in Romans chapter 6, the Apostle Paul again reminds us that in Christ our sins go to the cross with him and we are buried there. And in Christ we are raised from the dead and we are given life. Our value, our sense of self-worth does not come from a group of 13 or 14 year old kids grumbling about what they had for a snack that night, but it comes from a God who has given to us his image. Yet we still like to grumble and complain. We still like to murmur about some of the things that God does or allows to have happen. How many times over the years when there's been a tragedy in a family that I've heard someone complain, well, why couldn't it have been the person down the street? Why did it have to be me? Or, Pastor, what is it that I did wrong that God is striking me down 
with this tragedy. In our text for this day, we see a man who was certainly facing a tragedy. His daughter, perhaps 12, 13, 14 years old, Talitha, is at the doorstep of death. And here this Jairus, the head of this synagogue, very well, well-known well person in the community, perhaps fairly successful, wealthy, knew that there was nothing he could do. There was no medicine, there were no doctors or physicians that were going to cure this girl. He was thinking undoubtedly to himself about all the things that he had looked forward to when she would marry and have babies and suddenly realized that's not going to happen. So here is this Jesus that he had heard about, the one who had already done miracles, the one whose teachings were with power and authority. And he went to him, and as it says in our text, then behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at the feet of Jesus and begged him, saying, my little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed and she will live. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. You note that there was no grumbling, complaining. There was no murmuring at God. There was no attempt to admonish God and tell him, you know, you shouldn't be allowing this to happen. It was just simply a sense of trust and faith where he came and he prostrated himself to the Lord and Savior of the world. And he pleaded that he would come and make his daughter well. I remember there was an occasion once, it was the first weekend in May in 2012. There was a group of us that loaded into a van. First of all, it was Pastor Jimmy, the Chinese pastor at the Jungman City Church, and his daughter Sarah. Also Lydia, the Chinese administrator of the center, who was going to come along with us as a translator. And then there were us Americans. It was Sharon and her Chinese adopted son Peter and Alyssa and Eric and myself. And we went on about a three-hour van ride north to a city called Hunan. Not a very big city. They only had 80,000 people there. And then there were the villages all around it. An area very well known for its poverty. One of the first things we did is we went to one of these villages where there were a group of people that were waiting for worship to start. Pastor Jimmy, he went upstairs with all the 12, 13, and 14-year-olds to kind of teach a Bible class. Eric and Alyssa went with some of the little children to teach them a Bible class. And, of course, they had a translator to help them out. And I had the opportunity to preach to this congregation. And on that day, they heard a down-to-earth Lutheran law gospel justified by grace through faith sermon. And there were a lot of people there. Because my experience was is that Chinese love Americans. And so here was this white guy, China, American guy, coming to preach at this church. So there were many people in the village that came here just to see this white guy. But there were also people there for another reason, that perhaps normally didn't come to church there. Because you see, we were giving out scholarships that day. The English Center collects money from missionaries and from providers back here in the States. And then people in Hunan can fill out applications for scholarships. And then they take the money and divide it up among the number of those who have applied for the scholarships. That day, people got about 900 yen, or about just a little over 100 American dollars. What they would use with those scholarships are for things like paying medical bills, paying the utility bills, or perhaps if their child has educational expenses for things like that. Keep in mind, these people are very poor. But in order to get the scholarship, they have to come to the worship service, and there they hear the word of God. Then after the service is over, the scholarships are awarded to these families. Just about the time that we were getting ready to leave, one of the other Americans, Sharon, came over to me and said, did you notice that young lady over there, the one that has darker skin? 
I found out that her name was Carmen. See, the Chinese like to take American names, many of them, particularly the younger Chinese, because they recognize the fact that Americans don't remember their Chinese names more than about 12 seconds. And so they take English names so that we can remember better who they are. So her name was Carmen, and Sharon pointed out to me about her dark skin. And I said, well, yeah, you know, I did notice that her skin is a little darker, but there are some ethnic Chinese that have darker skin than others. But then Sharon said, did you notice that her lips and her fingers are blue? Because apparently she has a very serious heart problem. The surgery is way, way more expensive than she could ever afford, or her family. The girl was about 12, 13 years old. And even if she could get the surgery, her family didn't even have the money to transport her to a hospital where it could be done. So she lived with this condition every day of her life, knowing that tomorrow or today could be her last day. I first noticed her with a group of other girls near a keyboard, and they were playing music and singing Christian songs. Because you see, this young lady is a Christian. Every Sunday, she uses her own money and gets on a bus and rides 20 to 30 minutes to this little village and to this church to attend worship and to go to Bible study. And then she uses her own money to go back. And when she's at home, she witnesses to her family about who Jesus is and what he has done for her. Because you see, her family is not Christian. And the thing that I noticed that day was is that there was no grumbling or complaining. At least I don't think so. I don't know Chinese. But she seemed to be very happy and elated. She was singing and full of joy. Does that mean that there was never a time that thoughts went through her mind, Lord, why me? There likely have been. Yet there was a trust in Jesus as her Lord and Savior, knowing that he had forgiven her sins and that he had given to her the gift of life. And to be honest with everyone here, every time I start grumbling and complaining about something happening in my life, I just think of Carmen and the courage and the bravery that she has to live every day, knowing that that day or the next day could be her last in this world. In our text, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, don't be afraid, only believe. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult and those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, Why make this commotion and weep? The child's not dead, but sleeping. Well, they ridiculed him. But when they had, he had put them all outside, he took the father and mother, the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha, Talitha, kume which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. This is the Son of God, God himself. By his very word, he has the power to rise, raise this little girl from the dead. A little while ago, I spoke some Chinese to you. Ya su, ya fu hao, chi shi zai zai da. Those words say, Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Now, this isn't the Sunday of the resurrection. That will come a few months down the road. But every day is a day of the resurrection because that's what we live in. Because Jesus not only died on the cross to put our sins there, but he rose from the dead to, feed, to defeat Satan's sin and death and to give us that victory. Carmen knows that she has that victory. And this same Jesus that came to this little girl and raised her from the dead, has made the promise to Carmen and to each of us that he will do the same for us. Immediately the girl rose and walked, for she was 12 years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. But he commanded them strictly that no one should know it and said that something should be given to her to eat. In the book of Acts, Jesus reminds us that we have a responsibility to take his word out, whether it be in our local areas, to the state of Iowa, to our nation, or throughout the world. 
And so we have the opportunity to do that because he is the one who empowers us. And he is the one who gives us the resources. Not all of us are able to get on a plane and fly to Hong Kong or Africa or to Europe. But right here in our own community, we have the opportunity to tell people who Jesus is. He is the one who gives forgiveness and life. And we have the opportunity to pray and, yes, to financially support those who do go out to Hong Kong and to Africa and Europe and South America. And we pray that the Spirit would so guide each of us that we would do what we can to help those who do go out. After worship, we will be having a lunch over in the fellowship hall, and at that time, I do have a slide presentation and some things to tell you about, about what I've done previously in China and what I will be doing when I go back. I'd like to encourage and invite all to come to find out what's happening at your English Center in Macau and in Jungman. May this God who has been so gracious to us, who gives to us the law to show us our sin and to convict our hearts, but then to show us the cross and to know that we will also hear those words, kume, rise. Because as he has risen from the dead, we know that we too shall rise from the dead. In Jesus' name, amen. May God's peace, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in faith, In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We make confession of our saving faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 175. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Lord God, Heavenly Father, through your word of grace in Christ Jesus, you bring life to those caught in death. You reconcile all people to yourself and create children from enemies. We thank you for having given us faith through your word of grace, and we pray that you might use our humble witness in this world to draw others to your church for mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Savior, you have called Pastor Paris to serve your kingdom by sending him to China. We pray that you bless his work there. Open the ears of the people to hear your message and open his mouth to speak it in all truth and purity. Let your church grow in China, that the people there might join us in your eternal kingdom, Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Savior, you brought Tim Danger safely through his surgery this week. Accept our humble thanks. Bless him now as he recovers, that his strength might return to him quickly, and that his faith be strengthened as he sees your undeserved kindness and mercy at work in his life. Lord, in your mercy. God of all grace, you have extended your love to the people of this world. You have forgiven lifetimes of idolatry. We pray that you bless all of our missionaries throughout the world making their words your word, and securing the souls of your elect before the day of your return. Hear all of our prayers and bless us for the sake of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen.
together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let me pray. Grant, we implore you, Almighty God, to your church, your Holy Spirit, and the wisdom which comes down from above, that your word may not be bound, but have free course, and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, so that in steadfast faith we may serve you, and in the confession of your name abide to the end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.